session we shall be praying for the church the peace of the church international in the book of Romans chapter 10 verse 18 Genesis chapter 28 and verse 16 but I say have they not heard yes verily their sound went into all the earth and their words unto the ends of the world and Jacob awake out of his sleep and he said surely the Lord is in this place and I knew it not we are going to pray Holy Spirit we ask that you magnify the testimonies erupting from Peace Church International in the eyes and the heart of sinners, including our first-time worshippers and new converts, that will convince and cause them to be established in this church. Lift your voices, open your mouth and pray. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Holy Spirit of living God, we ask that you magnify the testimonies erupting from the church international in the eyes, in the heart of sinners, including our first time worshippers and new converts that we convince and cause them to be established in this commission in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Holy Spirit of living God, we ask that you magnify every testimony erupting from this commission in the eyes, in the heart of all sinners, including our first time worshippers and new converts that we convince and cause them to be established in this church in the name of Jesus. In Jesus Christ's name we have prayed. 
in the book of Hebrews chapter 8 verse 11, 2 Peter chapter 3 and in verse 9b. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, saying, know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest, not willing that any man should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So I'm going to pray, O oh Lord, we pray that anyone that comes in contact with the message of Peter's International will accept and embrace Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and become abiding members in this church. Lift the voices and pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh Lord, we pray that anyone that will come in contact with the message of Jesus Commission, the Peter's International, will accept and embrace Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and become abiding members in this church in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It's not the will for any man to perish, but all to come into repentance. Oh Lord, we pray that anyone that comes in contact with the message of Jesus Commission, Peter's International, will accept and embrace Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, become a member, become abiding members in this church in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Holy Spirit of Living Father, we pray that anyone that will come in contact with the message of Peter's International will accept, embrace Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and become abiding members in this church in the name of Jesus. In Jesus Christ's name we are praying. Shall we lift our voices and give him all the glory? We know he has heard of. In Jesus Christ's mighty name we are praying. Next session we are praying for the presiding pastor Felix Elo. Felix Elo, Isaiah chapter 11 verse 2, Isaiah chapter 60 verse 3. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel, and might the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord and the Gentiles shall come to the light and kings to the brightness of the rising we are going to pray Holy Spirit and you Felix Ulo with the spirit of wisdom and capacity to proper solutions to the challenges of the world and its leaders that we compare novels to follow his teachings and abide in peace in the church international now and in the future lift your voice and pray in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth Holy Spirit and you feel it Lord, with the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of might, the spirit of counsel, with the spirit of understanding and capacity to proffer solutions to the challenges of the world and its leaders that will compel nobles to follow his teaching and abide in peace in the church international in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Holy Spirit, Lord, and you fill his honor with the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, the spirit of excellence, Lord, and capacity to proffer solutions to the challenges of the world and its leader that will compel nobles to follow his teaching and abide in peace in the church international in the name of Jesus Christ of Manhood. In Jesus Christ's mighty name we pray. We are still praying. We are praying for the journey members, visitors, and online worshippers. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 11. As for thee also, by the blood of thy covenant, I have set forth thy prisoners out of the pit wherein is no water. We're going to pray by the blood of Jesus. We decree the instant liberations of students and families genuinely connected to Peace City Church International, held down by the power of darkness through spells, charm, enchantment bad habits, immorality, alcoholism, drugs, prostitutions, all occultism, lift your voice and pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, by the blood of Jesus, we decree the instant liberation of students and family, Lord, genuinely connected to Peace City Church International, held down by the power of darkness, two spells, charms, enchantment, bad habits, immoralities, alcoholism, drugs, prostitution, or occultism, by the blood of Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ, by the blood of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, we decree the instant liberation of students and family love genuinely connected to Peace City Church International, held down by the power of darkness, to spells, charms, enchantment, bad habits, immorality, alcoholism, drug, position, by the blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, in Jesus Christ, mighty name we pray. Let us thank him, God has heard us. Father, we thank you. We give you glory in Jesus Christ, mighty name. You will have your wonderful seat. Please, we clap for our offering. Let us welcome the choir for administration.
celebrating me is Jesus you're celebrating please do that with understanding are you celebrating Jesus tonight somebody hallelujah
faithful to me. You are faithful to me. You are faithful.
in Jesus' name we have given thanks. The mountain of the Lord's house is the mountain of varieties. Every time you show up, he has a store, everything. Now, I'd like you not to forget that. Every time you show up in God's presence, he has a store, everything. God will give everything. Now, but, you know, it depends on what you want per time. So, you'll be pressing in the prayers and saying, Lord, in this meeting, this is what I want, or these are the things I need. Pray in the name of Jesus now. Let your heart pray as your mouth prays. There has to be an alignment between your heart and your mouth. Don't be absent-minded when you are talking. Don't be distracted when you are talking. Let there be a synergy between your spirit and your voice. The effectual fervent. Fervent means heartfelt, heart-based, deep-seated, prayer of a righteous man and very much. So you make sure you pray with your heart. This could be the prayer that will change your life if you pray with all of your heart. Lord, tonight, in this very service, meet me at the point of my name. Tell him what it is you want him to do. May I rise from this meeting fully blessed? If his finances, tell him. Healing in your body, tell him whatever it is. In Jesus' name we have prayed. We know God has said, oh, shall we all give him thanks for hearing us? Lord, we thank you for hearing us. In Jesus' precious name. Lord, take all the glory again for the first service, for all the testimonies in that service. Take all the glory for all that you will do in this service. Now, please take all the glory for the light in the first service. And then take all the glory for the light in this service. We are set for what you have for us. Give everyone quality of understanding. And let this service produce testimonies. In Jesus' precious name. Don't sit down yet. Psalm 41 and 2. It's a month of divine exemption from all evils and greater favors. You'll be praying and saying, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for you will preserve me. I thank you because you'll keep me alive. I thank you because you are blessed and I'll continue to be blessed. And I thank you because you will not deliver me to the will of my enemies. Their purposes will not come to pass. Now raise your voice and thank him that way. Lord, thank you for I'm preserved. Not only will he preserve you and I, he will continue to preserve us. He will keep us alive. We shall be blessed upon the earth. And we thank you for the desire of our enemies will not come to pass in our lives. Their plans and their purposes, their arrows, their expectations will never come to pass because you will not deliver us to the will of our enemies. It won't happen the way they dreamt it. It won't happen the way they desired it. You will not deliver to the will of our enemies. We give you all the glory. Take all the glory, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Now, take your seat and celebrate Jesus heartily for all that he's doing in your life and in this commission. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Take every Thanksgiving opportunity very seriously because Thanksgiving is one of the triggers of supernatural favor. Now, there, is, there are natural favors and there's natural favors. Alright, sir? There are natural favors and I mean favors that come naturally. But you want to enjoy supernatural favors? Thanksgiving is a secret. Thanksgiving is the secret. One of the triggers. For so every time we say celebrate him, give him thanks, praise him, whatever we say that talks about extolling God, magnifying God, exalting God, and all of that, please don't don't come to them casually approach them with deep understanding let the people praise thee O Lord let all the people praise thee then shall the archie that increase and God even our God shall bless us he said God shall bless us and all the ends of the earth shall fear him Psalm 67 5 to 7 and so every time we give him thanks he unlocks the heavens over us every time we give him thanks he unlocks the heavens over us and then the earth. Now, here is it. Here is it. The things that make the earth prosper come from heaven. The things that make the earth prosper come from heaven. I like you not to forget that. Now, please, the word earth there in Psalm 67 talks about your life. Then shall your life prosper. And the things that make the earth prosper come from heaven. Every good. 
and every perfect gift coming from above. I'm sure you know that from the Father of Light, with whom there is no variableness, neither a shadow of turning. So if it is good, it can only come from Him. And one of the triggers for unlocking the heavens so that the earth will yield that fruit, your life will yield this fruit, is just give it. Praise God. Now that's not my teaching for tonight. But you know, God brings light every time. God brings light every time. Your own is be open. Thank you, Jesus. Please daily engage the special exemption prayer manuals and the Bible study manuals. Nobody is going to penalize you. But the reason we provide those things is so that you, on a daily basis, interface with God's word and you are opened up to God's light and, you know, blocks upon blocks upon blocks of wisdom are laid in you. It will be long, you'll be strong. Romans 10 and 18, 10 and 17, faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So, faith rises as you interface with God's word. So, please, and then pray those prayers. Don't be too busy not to pray. <laughs> if you don't pray, you will pray. Did you hear what I said? What did I say, sir? You must pray. It's either you pray when you should or you pray when you should not. Somebody now says, Is there a time you don't need prayer? Yes, sir. There's a time prayer will not be important. Because what you should be praying for, there's been a supply of wisdom. So if you don't pray, you will pray. They tell you, pray, pray, pray. Pray, pray, pray. Don't wait to pray fire service kind of prayer. You don't need that. That's why we say pray now. Pray, pray now. Pray to be exempted from all evils. Pray for greater favors. Pray now, pray now. No one will ever be caught off guard in the name of Jesus. I decree in the name of Jesus by the covenant God has with this commission, no one will ever be taken by surprise in the name of Jesus. The Lord will defend you. 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 The Lord will defend your family. The Lord will defend your life. In the precious name of Jesus. In this service, we seek to conclude on what we started in the first. How many were blessed in the first service? Those who were around, I'm sure most of them are in the overflows. Um, I was thoroughly blessed. I was thoroughly blessed. You know, you see how God just gives you wisdom. Like uh, these are things that people go to go and learn in, in business schools. But you know, no one is as versatile as the Holy Spirit. He just shows you everything you need to know. Praise God. No one. You can't beat his wisdom. You can't. He just knows it all. May you constantly remain in touch with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Such that you will never be lacking in any area of your life in the name of Jesus. Tonight's communion is communion for desired favors. And so it's an open check. Every man tap into it. What is it you desire? As you are going to come in on the table, pour it out. And you will have it. Our parents, the youth, the children's Thanksgiving will come up on the 19th of July. That is the Sunday after our third year anniversary. You know, July is anniversary month, 16th actually. And then by the Sunday, please, every parent, give your child 200 naira to put in an envelope. As your Thanksgiving offering, they will all come with those offerings to the altar. Start now to prepare. See what the Holy Spirit just said to me now. And let me say it. I'm going to say it here without fear of people. There are many parents now that because of 200 naira and because of lack of planning, on Thanksgiving they, they won't bring, they won't come to church. They won't come to church. Because it will come to them as a surprise and they don't have the money to give to those children and they cannot bear their children not coming with their own envelopes. What is 200 naira? So plan it now. You can even package the envelope and keep it now. You show this train the way. It's a train of a child in the way he should go. And when he's old. 
I didn't know about tithing when I knew anything. I knew about tithing as a child. I was already tithing as a child. Nine, ten, eight. Eight, nine, ten. I was already tithing. My parents would put it there. So that's your tithe. Youth Day, Sunday, 28 June. Praise God. You know, Corona has done many things. So, <laughs> so there have been no dramas. There have been no those, you know. But I'm going to be having a special session with the youth on Saturday, 27th. It's going to be a two hour, three hours power pack session. Hmm? I'll share some things with you. You'll never remain the same. Our youth will compete globally. In the name of Jesus. Okay, let me just give you an what I'm going to be talking. I'm going to be speaking on leverage. Leverage. I will talk to the youth on leverage. If you're not a youth, don't come here. This one is not a daddy. He knows even if I don't marry. As I'm not old. No. Youth. Youth. Not youth at heart. Youth in body. <laughs> Everyone say youth at heart. I don't want youth at heart. I want youth in. <laughs> but youth by age. <laughs> because even those who are who say youth at heart, they have strong body. No, youth by age. And don't ask me the age limit. I won't tell you. If you are married, don't let us see. Don't come near this church. Don't even come to greet me. There's some people that say that I just say, I can't greet you. Don't come. Just greet me on Sunday. Youth, don't worry. We'll meet on that day. It will be a good day. Praise God. Now, all brothers and sisters um, who are due for marriage, whether you, you have a fiancé or not, please submit your names to the pastor's PA. It's very important. Saturday is the last day. Are you ready? Enjoying divine exemption for, from job crisis and losses. But two, enjoying divine exemption from job crisis and losses. But two. Psalm 91 verse 10, Psalm 1 and 3. Psalm 91 verse 10, Psalm 1 and 3. Psalm 91 and 10 is the one exemption scriptures and Psalm 1 and 3 is the exemption from job crisis and losses scripture. Psalm 91 and 10 say, There shall no evil before thee, neither shall any plague come neither. Now, I didn't read Psalm 1 and 3 in the first service. It was deliberate. So I intend to read that here and then draw from there. No evil. Job crisis. No plague. Job prices, job losses. Now, in Psalm 1 and 3, it says, And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. Read from there with me, everybody. His labor also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. So, if you look at that, you see there is no fear of collapse of whatever it is it does no fear of drought no fear of economy no fear of what the season is no fear of what the time is it's planted by the rivers of water it's planted by the rivers of water and i'd like you to know that every time you talk about water in the bible you talk about the word of god praise god every time you talk about water in the bible it talks about what Word of God. He said, if a tree be, be caught and the stump is left in the earth, he said, by the sprinkling of water, it will come alive. So, no matter how bad a man's life, a man's case is, just a sprinkling of God's word, he jacks back to life. Praise God. Now, we define the keywords. Divine exemption. Enjoying the covering of the Almighty God from tragedies. Divine exemption is enjoying the covering of the Almighty God from tragedies. It's the same definition as the first service because they're going side by side. Enjoying the covering of the Almighty God from tragedies. So you are covered by God from experiencing anything tragic. Now, in this case, your job, 
and the works of your hands. What is job crisis? Job crisis A means having severe unemployment problems. They are the same as I defined for those that were in the first service. So, but for you here, I needed to have it. Having severe unemployment problems, you're unable to get a job, you're unable to work, you have no job. What is job crisis B? Facing job threatening situations. Facing job threatening situations. Now, uh, there's a difference between the first definition and the second because the first talks about those who don't have, who are making efforts to secure jobs. And the second talks about those who have jobs, but they are facing situations and circumstances that are threats to retaining the jobs. Praise God. Now, I said to them in the first service that life is one big workplace. God made man to walk, and until you commit to walk, your life will not stand out. God made man, made man to walk, and until you commit to walk, your life will not stand out. God took Adam and put him in the midst of the garden after he made a perfect garden. After God made a perfect garden where everything was complete, he still took the man and put him in the midst of the garden to dress it and to keep it. To dress it and to keep it. So you're not here to eat. You're here to walk. Is somebody hearing me? You're not here to wear clothes. You're here to walk. And the apostles put it very succinctly. He said, anyone that will not walk should not eat. Now, if you read it on face value, what you see is that you have no right to go to bother others or all of that. If you don't walk, don't eat. But if you look at it from the spiritual perspective, you see that he's saying to us that walk is what commits God to supplying your needs. The one who will not walk destroys his opportunity for divine supply that will sustain him. So everybody must walk. The consequences of a job crisis can be very far-reaching. Take, for example, the family depends on one person as a breadwinner, and the person depends on his job. So, as long as the job is on, the family is sustained. And then all of a sudden, he loses his job. He has not just lost his job, he has lost his livelihood. All his plans will come to a standstill. All his dreams will come to a standstill. All targets will come to a standstill. Because he has no means to pursue the actualization of all of these things. So to have a job is a favor you must, you must recognize from God. However, to keep it is as important as securing it. You should not be losing jobs as quickly as you get them because it's going to have far reaching effects on you, on the family. There are bills that go with life. And like it or not, the, the, the higher you go, the heavier your bodies. Did you hear that, sir? The higher you go in life, the heavier your, your bodies will never get lighter. To a job loss or a job crisis is a threat to a man's well-being, to a family's well-being. Now, I decree in the name of Jesus, everyone that's been out of job, after this teaching, you'll get a job. Now, not because of the teaching, but because Jesus will release his grace and give you a job testimony to affirm that he spoke. In the name of Jesus Christ.
everyone that's been on a job for too long and has not been promoted, after this meeting, you are going to the next level. Amen. Now, there are people that want to go from jobs that have no future. You know, you can be on a job for 10 years without direction. You don't know, no promotion, no, nothing has been added, no value added, nothing. Now, I decree the heavens open. All those that desire life-changing jobs. Now, hear what I'm going to say. As long as you make a covenant with me today, that you will remain in the kingdom and use your resources for the kingdom and not to satisfy the flesh and the works of darkness, receive a miracle job. Amen. Now, receive a miracle job. Now receive a miracle job Amen. in the precious name of Jesus. So this prophecy has a strong caveat. If God gives you a job, you earn one million a month and you will change and have no time for him, you won't get it. It has a strong caveat, spiritual caveat. If the change of your level will mean the change of your character, it won't give you because there are people that are character change with their change. All this daddy, daddy, papa, papa, dad, dad, humble, 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 rush to church. You won't be there anymore. You won't give me. But every, you will hear the testimony. Every one of us here whose heart is right with God, with this commission and with God's servant, and God can count on you that your blessing will be his blessing. You will get a job after this service. In Jesus' precious name. You know, there are people God can bless. Because what he puts in your hand is not sure it's for him. But if God is just certain that he gives it to you is his own, congratulations. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The presence of God is strong now. Strong. God said to me just now, I'll be giving gifts. Now, now, never play with every time I say I hate him. I don't know how to do too many things. And I'm not here to tell you I know how to do too many things. But if I tell you I hate God, I hate God. I don't know how to do too many things. I'm not experienced in ministry. But if I ever tell you I hate him, I hate him. That's always been a proof to show that I hate him at every point in time. Now, God said to me I hate him by his spirit just now. He said, I will be giving gifts in this service. People will receive cars in this service. People will receive lands in this service. People will receive jobs in this service. People will receive visas in this service. People will receive husbands in this service. People will receive wives in this service. People will receive babies in this service. Now, people will receive money in this service. People will receive contracts in this service. People will receive breakthroughs in this service. People will receive houses in this service. Whatever is receivable is giveable in this service. Whatever is receivable is giveable in this service. Whatever you can receive, now take it in the name of Jesus. Whatever you can believe God for now, take it in the name of Jesus. Whatever you can believe God for now, take it in the name of Jesus. Whatever you are believing God for, now receive it in the name of Jesus. Lord, take all the glory. Lord, take all the glory. Now be seated. Now you see, we are not in charge to talk. We are not in charge to talk. Do you know, sir? God does not need my voice to bless people. And that's why I'm not particular about plenty, plenty teaching. Now I'm prophesying and things are happening in the realm of the spirit. You'll be on your own, they'll call you. Now I speak as a saint prophet. It will happen before Sunday. It will happen before next week. It will happen before the end of this month. It will happen all through this year for you. You will be on your own and your greatest expectation will be delivered to you. Now, I decree that God activate men. In that night could not the king sleep. That's what the Bible says. And he said for the book of Chronicles, Ah, Mordecai was remembered. Now, I decree in the name of Jesus. Now, remember Joseph was in the prison. The king could not sleep because of the dream God gave to him. And he sought for a man that could pro provide solution to the needs. 
Ah, the only man that had it was Joseph. And I speak to you by the Spirit of God tonight. Whatever your heart craves for, before this meeting ends, heaven will give it to you. Now, I stand on my covenant with my fathers and the God of my fathers. Whatever your heart craves for, before the end of this meeting, you will receive it. I say you will receive it. I say you will receive it. I have seen the manifestation of God's covenant with the people in this commission. I have seen clear proofs of God's covenant with the people in this commission. I have seen clear proofs of God's covenant with the people in this commission. I have seen clear proofs of God's covenant with my mentor in this commission and now I stand here to decree that everyone in this meeting whatever your heart cries for that you need to have a better life is released in the name of Jesus it is released to you in the name of Jesus it is released to you in the name of Jesus it is released to you in the name of Jesus now, hear what he said to me. I heard him very clearly. He said, hey, son, the silver is mine and the gold is mine. I heard him just now. This I said, hey, son, the silver is mine. Now, hear this, sir. If money can buy it, I give you 31 days. If money can buy it, the God of heaven will deliver it to you. If what you are looking for is what God can do, before the end of this month, you will have that testimony already. If what you are looking for is what God can do before the end of this month, you will have that testimony already. If what you are looking for is what God can do before the end of this month, you will have it already. In the name of Jesus. Now give him thanks if you have received. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name. Be seated. Now, I'm going to do a quick one, but can you just permit me to go as he wants us to go? <laughs> because you don't run this church your way and have him commit to you. So when you let the wheel go and say, it's your church, drive as you, as you so desire, you see him manifest. And now, there's a strong impression of my spirit to prophesy tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ who died, resurrected, and is in heaven. Every human or spiritual protocol militating against your testimony, your next breakthrough is hereby suspended. Every physical or spiritual protocol resisting your next testimony is hereby suspended. Now, everything he has have been freely given receive your portion in the name of Jesus receive yours 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 in the name of Jesus God can't say it's a month of greater favor and normal things will happen now I like you to tell what I'm going I'm going somewhere with this God can't say it's a month if if now if he says greater that means there's something great he does it better so God can say it's a month of greater favor and that it's not a remarkable. Now, I prophesy by the Spirit of Jesus Christ a remarkable testimony will answer to you after this service. A remarkable testimony answers you after this service. Your family will take delivery of a remarkable testimony. It will happen after this particular service in the name of Jesus. Now, hear what he said to me. He said, son, everything you say, I will do. Can I prophesy to you? The yoke is broken. The yoke is broken. The chains have been limited anyone are broken. The battle against your finances have come to an end. The battle against your marital settlement has come to an end. The battle against your career has come to an end. The battle against your health has come to an end. The battle against your family has come to an end. The battle against your husband has come to an end. The battle against your wife has come to an end. The battle against your children has come to an end. 
everyone in this meeting on light on ground you will return with testimonies thank you father we vow never to share your glory in jesus precious name be seated be seated be seated thank you lord praise god this is church the place of his presence the church is not the house the place of his presence now hear what the Lord said to me he said if you always give me a place I'll give you a place I heard him just now and I'd like you not to forget this he said if you always give me a place I'll give you a place always just put him in the center of your life let him have a say let him know about it. You always give me a place in this church, and I will give you a place. I will give your sons places. I will put them in thrones. Jesus is your church. It's your church. Jesus is your church. Thank you, Lord. Now, I command your phone lines open. Yeah. Calls of favor locate you. Yeah. Every platform via which angels can reach you. Le rose kutaziza lutalia. Le prushaga le rose zika kuzia. Any platform via which the angels of heaven can locate you, I command that your platform open in the name of Jesus. I command that your platform open in the name of Jesus. Now, even if you don't have an email, you have a house. It's an avenue for them to find you. Whatever platform the angels of heaven can locate anyone at the sound of my voice, in seven days you will receive a divine visitor. In seven days you will receive the angel of favor. In seven days you will receive your package of favor. In the precious name of Jesus, Lord, now take all the glory. In Jesus' precious name. Now please be seated. Thank you, Lord. Ha, 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 ha. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, He said, We were like them that dreamt. Then what was a mouth filled with laughter? And the people say, See what the Lord has done for them. In this particular meeting, you will contact a miracle that will command human followership. In this particular meeting, you will contact a miracle that will make men celebrate your God for you. In this particular meeting, someone will contact a miracle that for the next 25 years of your life, you will not struggle again. Now, I'm speaking by spiritual authority. Something will come upon you in this service. The next five years of your life, you will go with divine speed. You will go with divine speed. I'm saying to somebody, there has been a changeover in your life. You have been crawling and walking and struggling. Immediately after this meeting, you will take off. You will fly into glory. You will fly into testimonies. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Please be seated. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There's excitement in the air. God is moving everywhere. And it's resurrection hour. Come on now, come on now. It's moving in this hour. Why that Jesus might be glorified? Oh, that Jesus. We we'll sing it one more time. There's excitement. There's excitement. God is moving, God is moving in this church and his resurrection power. It's hitting me now, it's moving in this hour. Why that Jesus might be glorified in my life, oh that Jesus. And we say his resurrection power one more time. His resurrection power. 
is moving in this hour why that jesus might be glorified in our lives oh that jesus might be glorified now can you lift your two hands and say lord take your greatest glory in my life after this meeting do something take your greatest glory now tell him tell him tell him now you have been taking glory you have been taking glory from the day i was born to today you have been taking glory but lord please take your greatest glory now to ask god to take his greatest glory means he will do something great take your greatest glory my life is a proof of your favor my life is an embodiment of your mercy you have been taking glory but i ask oh god after this meeting take your greatest glory come on now pray it and pray in the holy ghost come on now come on now come on now somebody see a pastor you see this face another 1,000 years nothing will change but you just see his face once everything changes may you see his face tonight in the precious name of Jesus now we go straight to the point for the service how to enjoy divine exemption from job crisis and losses I took five in the first service take the remaining few of them in this service how to enjoy divine exemption from job crisis and losses praise the lord i won't take the ones i took in the first service so it's already on youtube it's on facebook you can go look it up then you want it you 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 buy it from the media save it up on your phones on your devices and feed on these things praise the lord Number six way to enjoy divine exemption from job press and losses. Never accept a job if you will not accept the conditions. If you want to ex escape job crisis, if you don't want to experience job crisis, never accept a job if you will not ex accept the conditions. Is somebody hearing me? It's simple. Because once you take the job, bound by the conditions. Once you put your hand to paper, then you're bound by the conditions. You can't take a job while rejecting the conditions that will come after you've taken the job and expect not to have crisis in your job. You must say, no, I like you. He says, give me the job first. Give me the job first. The job is more important. He says, I like you. I like you. Just know that I like you. He says, I just give me the job. The job is I'm hungry. He says, but don't forget I like you. And then when you pick up the job, he says, come see me tomorrow. He says, no. I'm a child of God. You are out. You start having issues. They give you a job. He says, don't forget I'm the one that gave you this job. Oh, remember I'm the one that gave you this job. Remember. I'm the one that gave you this job. Remember, I put you in this position. Remember, you wouldn't have had this appointment if not for me. Remember, remember. I put you there for a purpose. Remember. Sir, what is the purpose? Tell me now. Many years ago, about 10, 11 years ago, there about, someone was called who had no pedigree. 
in politics. And they brought him to the meeting, and four people said to him, if we make you chairman, can you give us five million every month? I don't understand, sir. Whatever they give to you, allocation, five million. He said, it's not, it's not a big deal now. It's a small thing, I'll do it. When he told me, I said, you won't meet up, oh. You will not meet up. He said, no, it's a small thing. You know, the thing about government is, once you enter, you must find your way around. I said, this one, the people tell you, you already know everything. They have been there, they came out of it, they just want to put in their stooges there. So he went in. First allocation came. He gave them. I don't need you. I say you. They say forget future. You don't have future. <laughs> you don't have future. Osho Baba say, Oba, you know go settle me. You are not going a second tenure. <laughs> Oba said, no Godfather in this life. Osho Baba said, I will show you that Godfather still rule. Force him out of APC. I'm cleaning my mouth so I won't say something. <laughs> Praise God. And they just sustained, they just sustained this uh, suspension from APC. I can tell you the end of that election. Just one range over, tell you. I can tell you who will win the election. I know him already. When I told you Bali will win, a pastor you and I know say it's not possible. A pastor said, it can't happen. Not me. I'm a man of God. I said, sir, sir, I know the person that we know. The pastor said, hmm, rabba, rabba, shaka, ka. He's, the man is his president now. The man is saying, who win? Praise God. Now, that's what, on a lighter note. I like you to smile because a smile opens your heart. But I can tell you who win a state election. I told somebody, I said, come and see me. He said, the, the, the political tension is too tight now. I, I, I can't travel from Imo State to Port Harcourt. I say, sir, you are out. Oh. I won't call his name. I say, sir, hurry and come and see me. I spoke to him, not that I spoke to somebody. Oh. I won't call his name. He was already on seat. I say, sir, hurry and come and see me. Oh. You are going home. Oh. He said, you know, the tension, the, the road is not clear. You, the road is not clear for you. That can afford any number of policemen. And any kind of convoy. Please sit down. You will see me with presidents one day. <laughs> Not because we want anything from them. They'll be looking for cancer from us. You'll be alive. You'll see it. They remove the man. The man come and say, sir, can I see you? See me for what, sir? He said, we can dash down to Potaco. Don't dash down. Stay where you are. He said, full stop. Full stop. Stay there. By the time the judgment came, he says, sir, we can dash down, dash down to where? When God has changed the dress. Okay. What did I say? Never accept a job if you will not accept the conditions. Hmm? You are not permitted to rebel against the system. <laughs> Your loyalty to the system you accept must be undivided. Sir, if it's an ungodly system, check out. You don't like the way things are done. My friend, get out of the way. You can't with your open eyes take a job to work under a sinner. I'm going to say, hey, sir, sir. My friend, don't take the job in the first place. Get out of the way and wait for something pure. Every good gift and every perfect gift come from above. Thank you, Jesus. John 15, 19, 1 Peter 2 and 18. John 15, 19, 1 Peter 2 and 18. Look at this. John 15, 19. Together with me. If ye were of the world, the world will love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hated you. So you know you are not of the world, you take the job of the world. 
they will hate you. That's they won't just sack you. That's if, if if you don't live with shame. You know, somebody can put you in a tight corner where they will stigmatize your name. And you either have to remove the company from your CV or never work again. They will so deal with you that, of course, you know, every intelligent um, employer must consult with the last place of work. So they call and say, you know so person? They walked here. He said, don't. Who are you? He said, sure. No, don't. Oh. Criminal. Why are you, are you a criminal? Because you refuse to sign fraud. I say, sign 200,000. When you should sign 10,000. So you just get out of the system before you lose your name. Some have lost their lives because of these things. Some have lost families because of these things. Crisis. In 1 Peter 2 and 18, look at what the Bible says. Unequivocal about it. The Bible is unequivocal about it. Together, everybody. Servants, be subject to your masters. With what, sir? How many? All fear. Not only to the good and gentle, but also to the forward. Did you see that, sir? So, you don't think I'm just talking something from the blues. He said, once you subscribe to servanthood under these masters, whether they be good or forward, be subject to them. Hmm? The day you went for interview, the man was smoking. The day you went for interview, he was smoking. Uh, you say from where? You, <coughs> that's what I do know. <coughs> you want this job? Yes, I do, sir. <coughs> you want this job? Yes, sir. Then by Monday morning, say, go and buy me a packet of Benson and Morris. Is that what they call it? <laughs> Who knows the original name? All of you keep, have kept quiet. All of you have kept quiet. Benson and Morris, that's what I know. What's the name, sir? <laughs> oh, Pastor Mario Reverend Sam. <laughs> Pastor Mario Reverend Sam, they say it's Benson and Hedges. <laughs> Praise God. And he says, sir, it's against my faith. Against your what? You are not in the company to do faith. Oh. You are not paid to do faith. You are paid to work and to be a servant. The servant is not greater than its master. You better run and go and buy the cigar. Or you run to office and write resignation letter. Did you hear me, sir? You better go and buy it. Or run to the office and write a resignation letter. Now, in a case like this, will you say there is someone fighting you? When you walked into it, your eyes open. Number seven. Consistent and faithful title. Be a consistent and faithful title. One of the things that Titan does for the believer is that it commits God to watch over everything He has given to you. Now, listen, it's not that because you're tied to God, God, God will not come and watch over a business where you a, a job you got through nonsense. Did you hear what I say, sir? Let me just tell you this very straight on. It is not because you are titan and God will now come and watch over a job you go through fraud or through lowering standards. Whatever he gives to you, he preserves if you commit to him with them. So once you tie it, he commits to that thing he gave to you and watches over it. So are you saying, what if I do drugs now and I have 10 billion I should not pay the tithe? We don't need that tithe. This kingdom is rich. Because the day you go to jail, prayer won't save you. He said, but I gave the church 100 million. Well, the saver is his, the God is his. You brought it back to him, but you go to jail. God forbid. Is somebody hearing me? I'm telling you sincerely now. The pastor wants to say, never you preach against people that do drugs because those ones can just give you money overnight. I said, ah, not me. The depth of the wealth of this kingdom inexhaustible i'm a living proof that this kingdom is rich 
Now, not in terms of just money as per paper, but in terms of God's grace. This kingdom is rich, full of mercy, full of money, full of grace, full of favor. Thank you, Jesus. You know, God loves you when you talk about his kingdom. It tickles him. Malachi 3, 7 to 10. Malachi 3, 7 to 11, please. Malachi 3, 7 to 11. All of us will read together. Malachi 3, 7 to 11. Together. Even from the days of your fathers, ye are gone away from my ordinances, the ordinance of tithing, and have not kept them. Now, what does he say? He says, return unto me, and I will return unto you, say to the pastor, the Lord of hosts. But ye said, where then shall we return? Now he goes on to say, will a man rob God? You are reading with me, please. Yet ye have robbed me. For ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? And then he replies to you, in tithes. Now, now you know, I'm focusing on tithes, but look at offering. He brings in offering, you know. All these crafty givers, intelligent givers. You give him 15 naira. You give him 100 naira. You give him 10 naira. You give him 20 naira. God, you reserve your change for service days. That's how many people are. You reserve your change for service days. So, God is of your crumb. Sir, you can't give trash and get treasure. If God is from your crumb, what, what do you think he will give you? On Sunday, that's when you start gathering your 15 naira, 20 naira, now got 5, 100 naira, another 5, 100 naira, first service, second service, another 5, 100 naira, third service. Let's continue. Verse 9. What has happened because of the attitude in verse 8? Ye are caused with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Verse 10. Verse 10. Together, everybody, now bring you all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and put me now here with said a lot of folks if I will not open you the windows of heaven pour you out a blessing that I shall not be room enough to receive it verse 11 everybody together and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground neither shall your vine cast a fruit before the time in the field saith the Lord of hosts when you talk this part, many believers don't like to listen. When war comes, they'll look for him. Listen, you know, all of you that like paying God tight in areas, <laughs> you'll never recover in this kingdom. Your hands are from January to June. You are now paying God a tithe of March. But you have answered it from January to June. You are now paying God. Say, I'll be writing my tithes. There are too many things to do now. Let me just do the things that are more important. If God is not important to you, you will not be important to him. Now, I tell you this all humility before God. The, the, one of the reasons why every time I cry to him in seeming distress, he shows up, is because he's important to me. God is important to me. God is important to me. I was saying to my PA earlier today, I can't remember the time again, PA, if you can remember, you help me. I called him into my office. I said, PA, have you packaged my offering for this service? He said, no. I said, is it not true, sir? What time was that? Yesterday, right? I said, no, today. I know yesterday I asked you, but today I remember today. Have you packaged my offering? I said, sir, I said, sir, I said, 12-1. Who wasn't ready? But you know, sir, surely after I dash money, didn't you receive your own today? Apostle, Pastor Ma was not there when we were sharing the money. <laughs> Pastor Ma was busy chewing money somewhere. So we were chewing our own this side. Few minutes later, I was dashing money. You can never be stranded being a titan. Did you hear me, sir? Never. Now, I bet on God's integrity, you can never be stranded being a faithful titan. 
have seen people that would have suffered losses and tragedy and God just snatched them out of death. don't pay 10 percent tithes. When I pay from my account, I don't pay 10 percent tithes. I always say, my tithes. My tithes. Now, I have an inflow and the tithe of that inflow is there, but then there is more and then I say, my tithes. If you see the tithe, you will think it is the 10 percent of what I got. <laughs> but it's not. It's not because I'm paying with a mindset clearing the way ahead. Because like I know, I know like I know my name in this job, in this ministry. Sir, if God does not help you, nobody can help you. If you want to go far, don't even look at any human being. If God does not help you, nobody can help you. Be a constant and faithful tithe. Number eight. Is that clear enough? Tight every income. Is somebody hearing me? What did I say? Tight every income. Say somebody dash me. Tight every income. I still have a jotter. I can find it in my office. If you have time, you come and show me. Many years ago, I used to carry a small jotter in my pocket so I don't forget tight. Somebody give me 500, I'll write 50 naira. <laughs> So we give 1,000 right 100 naira. After some period of time, I got used to it. I don't need a jota anymore. Now, I'm saying that to everybody, but those who are working, don't play with your tight. Remember, oh, there's a caveat, oh, you are tightened on a job God gave you, not the one you gave yourself. He will protect it. If you tighten on a job he didn't give you, he can show you mercy. He can choose to show you mercy, but he owes you no commitment. If he didn't give you the job, he owes you no commitment. He can show you mercy. But if he gave you, and there is no element of compromise, boy, he will defend it to the latter. If he says go, then know your time there is up. Not that enemy warn you in battle. Is that clear enough? Number eight. It gets better now. Be deeply committed to kingdom service and advancement. Be deeply committed to kingdom service and advancement. If you want to be exempted from job crisis, be deeply committed to kingdom service and advancement. Once you make the kingdom his priority, everything that concerns you becomes God's priority. Everything. Everything. So, his vineyard is your priority, your vineyard becomes priority. It's simple. His vineyard is your priority. Your own vineyard becomes priority. It's very simple, sir. If his vineyard is your priority, your own vineyard will become God's, God's priority. It's simple. It's simple. Psalm 102, 13 and 14. Psalm 102, 13 and 14. together. Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her year that set time is come. Verse 14. Read here now. For thy servants take pleasure in her stones and favor the doors thereof. Now listen. People always quote verse 13. Prophesy verse 13. But verse 14 is the anchor of verse 13. Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion, upon me, for the time to favor her. Yeah, the set time is come. He said, now, this favor is released specially on him because he favors the advancement of Zion. He favors the advancement of Zion. Zion is a church. Praise God. If it was the advancement of Zion. 
when I was giving my all to the church, as a small boy, they were calling me a fool. When I was giving my all to the church as a small boy, now I live that, that's my life till now, till Jesus comes. But then, you know, it's easier now, perhaps, because I've mastered it. But when it was difficult, how people are crying. You have a two, three months old baby, and the money you should use to buy food, you sow it as seed. Oh boy. They say he lacks wisdom, he's a fool, doesn't know anything. See where the fools are today. And all them that made themselves their priorities and put God as, as we will attend to him later. I know where they are. I know where they are. <laughs> I know where they are. All oh, those who made God secondary, made themselves primary. I know where they are today. Matthew 6 and 33, seek you first. Seek you what, sir? First. Seek you what, sir? First. What? The kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. That's all. If the kingdom is your priority, boy, God is committed to you. Fully committed to you. Number nine. Maintain your spiritual identity. Maintain your spiritual identity. If you don't want to have job crisis and losses, maintain your spiritual identity. Now, let nobody deceive you. Being transparent gives you an edge. Being honest gives you an edge. Being truthful gives you an edge. Being straightforward gives you an edge. Is somebody hearing me? There will be a day that the only thing that will save you is transparency. There will be a day that the only thing that will save you is sincerity. There will be a day that the only thing they will judge you by in order for this opportunity to be sustained is honesty. You fail that test, you fail out. So you don't want crisis. You don't want trouble. Stay true to yourself. Stay true to your spiritual identity. Stay true to who you are in God. I said as I began, the first point was simple there. If that system is destroying your spiritual sanity, get out of it. You'd rather lose salary than lose destiny. Did you hear what I said, sir? You'd rather lose salary than lose destiny. You rather lose a job than lose your place in God. Is somebody hearing me, sir? You rather lose your job than lose your place in God. Psalm 92, verse 12, Psalm 1, 1 to 3. Maintain your spiritual identity. Psalm 2 verse 12. Psalm 1, 1 to 3. Together. You're still writing? Let me wait for you. I know I always make you read with me. The reason I do that is so that in your, in your quiet time, the Holy Ghost will have scriptures. He will remind you. Because many of us may not go back to read these things. Together, everybody. The righteous. Who? Now take note of that. Who? Shall do what? Shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. The righteous. Staunchless flow. Unstoppable grow. He just keeps going. He just keeps going. Why? Because he retains his righteousness. Right standing with God, right standing with man. The fear of God retained. Now look at someone, one, one, two, three. Look at what it says here. 
The first word is what? Blessed. You know what I say, sir? Once your mind is made up, once your mind is made up, to retain your spiritual identity in any system, you are blessed already. Let's read on. Blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful us too. And look at that. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate. Now, what does he mean by the meditate? Not just reading it, he lives by it day and night. What will happen to him in verse 3? And he shall be like a triple glass of water that bringeth forth the season. His lips also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Hmm? People should not be in doubt if you're a Christian, if you work in a system. People should know you stand out. People should know you. They shouldn't be in doubt. Is she a believer? Is she a believer? People should know you. By your fruits. Stand out clearly. So when they say, say no, 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 don't, you know, no, not him. This one. Remove her. Remove her name. Remove his name. He can't be part of this. Don't let him know. You know, you know him now. He's a church person. Even bad people like good people. Did you hear what I just said now? Even those crooks like honest people. The thief steals money and gives to somebody he can trust. <laughs> Do you know that, sir? The thief steals money and gives to somebody he can so just be somebody they can trust. You just be happy. No pressure, no stress, no any helter skelter. If you are ever forced out of a system because you refuse to sell out, you have been forced into a new realm. Did you hear what I said, sir? If you are ever forced out of a system because you refuse to sell out, I mean, in terms of your spiritual identity, you have been forced into a new realm. The problem we have is that people dwell on that place they were forced out of. That consumes their thoughts, launches them into sorrow, makes them complain, makes them murmur. If they let go and mount the saddle of faith, confessing and proclaiming their new realm because they lost their old place by reason of holding on to the standards of the gospel, they will open a new, entire new world of favor, an entirely new world of favor. But what happens, they spend the most of their time crying about the job they were sent away from, the job they lost. I just pray you see what I'm saying. I just pray you see what I'm saying. Some of them will fall sick, develop BP issues, because you were sacked from a job. When you know you left because you refused to lower the standards. But you should just maximize the new realm. Don't dwell in the place of sorrow and, 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 and murmuring or mourning as it were. Don't dwell there. Number 10 and the last. If you don't want to have job crisis and losses, number 10, defend your job spiritually. Defend your job spiritually. Now, hear what Jesus said. Jesus said, he said, whatever you bind on earth, will be bound. That means if you ignore it, it won't do nothing about it. So they are trying to sack you, they are trying to strangulate you, they are trying to set you up, and you keep quiet, you are crying there, and crying and sobbing. It will not overrule you. God will never overrule you. So your only is to stand your ground spiritually and defend your job. Now, there are two ways to defend your job. I'll just hover around that briefly and then we'll close. The two ways are number one, personal prayers. Personal prayers. Personal prayers. How do you do that? You pray for favor. Ask God to favor you. Pray for favor. 
How do you do that? You pray for the king's heart. Personal prayers. You pray for favor. You pray for the king's heart. I'm still talking about personal prayers here now. What you pray to be, to be exempted from job crisis. You pray personally. But what do you pray? You pray for favor. And then you pray for what? The king's heart. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. And it's a, like the water is stirring it whithersoever he will it. So you pray for the king's heart. Lord, may I be favored. May I be accepted. Anoint me with favor. Make me resistible. Make me indispensable in the system. Cause everyone that hears my name to love me. Let no conspiracy against me stand. Boy, those prayers work. Oh. Hmm? I can't call names. Wait, before you hear me talk some things, I have proofs in this commission, not, not abroad. Not in Lagos, Abuja. In this commission. Let my name command favor. On this day that we go for this disciplinary committee, as I show, take over. <laughs> Somebody was summoned to a disciplinary committee and the person prayed, God as I go, let this and that happen. I won't tell you what the person prayed. As the person got there, as the person got there, you look so fine. You look so fine. And that's what, what they were discussing. Where you buy this one? I would like to know who sell them for you. You give me his number. Where you buy this one? Then one woman now, the woman who is the, the Jezebel of his destiny in that job. You people should stop this you are doing. Let us face the issue on ground. The man talked to me and said, what is the issue on ground? He says, sir, he, he committed offense. He is here to be disciplined, to be queried and disciplined. Ah, you are just talking about. He says, is that the issue? Okay, go. We are not asking you anything again. I am your senior in this place. Do whatever you can do. He left the battle in the room and left and walked. He left the battle for them in the room and walked away. The woman was shouting, I won't take it. The man said, you will take it. This will not happen under my nose, or then you will lose your job. <laughs> and our own person walked away. That's when God is the one that gave you. Hmm? He will fight for you. What do you pray in personal prayers? Subdue and destroy every attack against your job destiny. Subdue and destroy every attack against your job destiny. Now, I'd like you to realize from what I said in the beginning, an attack on your job is an attack on too many things. An attack on your plans, an attack on your dreams, an attack on your family, an attack on the food on your table, an attack on children's school fees, an attack on house rent, an attack on every area of your life, as it were. So, you stand your ground and subdue and destroy every attack of the enemy on your dreams. On your dreams. On your dreams. So then I bind you. Cast you out. Get your hands off my job. Now, it said in Luke 10 and 19, Behold, I give unto you power to, to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. All, not some. Nothing shall be enemies hurt you. Now, listen. When you do all these things I'm saying, eh, and you have job crisis, know there's God behind it. You know, sometimes God allows certain shaking. You know why I allow shaking? When you get so comfortable in the wrong place, when God is saying, my son, my daughter, it's time to go forward, you say, no, I've arrived. He will shake you by himself. So you can rise up and then you can look further. In that sitting and realization position, you can't see further. So he shakes you off the table, shakes you off the seat, and then you can stand and now say, lift up your eyes and see. All right. The second way to defend your job spiritually. Engage prophetic support. 
Engage what? Engage prophetic support. What is that? The backing of spiritual forces. The backing of spiritual authorities. The backing of... Now, your parents can come in here. Your prophet, your saint prophet can come in here. Your parents can come in here. Now, they are godly people, God-fearing, spiritually sound people, prayerful people. They come in. And then we have your spiritual leader. God confirmed the words of his servant and performed the counsel of his messengers. Watch this. Watch this. He confirmed the words of his servant. He and then perform the kinds of business that say it to them, you shall be built. So, the prophet who says, whatever is of value to your destiny will not be taken by the enemy. God, God backs him up. Not the one that tells you bad dreams and bad prophecies and bad, bad vision. The one that says, no, this evil will not happen. God backs him up. Put it up there for them to see. The one that says, no, you won't be stranded. God backs him up. Now, let, learn this thing. Oh. Let me drop this with you. Learn this thing. Please, stop patronizing all these dark prophets. What do I mean? Negative, negative every time. Negative, negative, negative. It's as if many people's genius is a hearing bad news. If, if we don't prophesy that somebody here, they after you, you must look over the way. Why? Are you wired for bad news? He said, the ones I am backing up are the ones that say, you'll be built. You will not become a desolate place. You will not be stranded. This is how we back them up. But people prefer to go to where they say, your great-great-great-grandfather, your grand-grandmother, you know, in 1921, they brought a shrine, that shrine, they did not settle that shrine, you were a goat. Somebody came to tell me this week, and I walked the person out of my office. I said, you mean, you've been around me for how many years? You're still talking this nonsense. In, I'm, I'm quoting what I do. Every time I give example, I'm giving from a point. In 19 so they brought a shrine to our family. They didn't settle the shrine. So the shrine has power that the grandchildren will settle it. A pastor was telling somebody like this. He said, and the God in the shrine is standing behind you and say, settle me, settle me, settle me, settle me. <laughs> True life story, sir. And he said, if you won't say to me, you will never have rest. He says, sir, don't you think that is the reason I'm, I don't have rest? I said, I didn't know you didn't have rest. I told him, I said, I didn't know. I'm just saying for the first time, I don't have rest. Because rest, sir, is not the absence of challenges. It is our assurance of victory in the storm. Sir, you can shake this boat, but it won't capsize. You can shake this boat anything you want. Shake it, we won't go down. Now we can lose the boat, but no one will lose his life. That's what rest is. I said, I didn't know you didn't have rest all this while. So all this is I've been saying. Where have they been entering? Now, why did he even come to me? Uh, Daddy, I need your help. What help? They say we should contribute money to bring the people that will come and remove the shrine. I said, okay, I'm listening. And I know you're a father that has the interest of your son's at heart. Yes, I am. God knows I am. So, what is it? Can you find me 70,000? Me? What are they looking for? Um, I won't give you. So they can say, you push me out. You are the one that made me to change church. They won't even look at it from the point of being deceived. My heart was broken. It's so sad you call somebody a son, they don't call you father. It's so heartbreaking. 
You call somebody a daughter, they don't call you father. How on earth were you convinced? It's so heartbreaking. That you call somebody a son, they don't call you father. It's so heartbreaking. And you have the influence to come to me for 70,000 to go and move a shrine that has no house in your compound. They say the thing is there spiritually. All on a titty compound. In the center of the compound. The man says, as I'm talking to you now, all on a titty compound. I said, this same faith you are mustering for a shrine that cannot be seen. Can't you muster for a God that cannot be seen? This is everything. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But Sue says, by it, the elders obtain a good report. Why, if you can muster faith that it's in on a titty compound, why you can't see it with your eyes? How much more they go? That's everywhere. He left, tears came out of my eyes. My heart broke because we spend our life searching. I share from this altar from the bowels of my spirit. Let me say this again, not to pass blame to anyone. If anything happens to a son, it's not traceable to this altar. I stand before God who created heaven and earth to say this. Whether male or female, if anything happens to anyone, it is traceable to this altar. It can't be traceable to this altar. Boy, I'm deliberating my work with God. I'm deliberating. To ensure that whatever I have to do to keep my son safe, it will either be ignorance on your part or disobedience on your part. Not on this part. Now I say this only to before God. Because it's not about me, it's about him. So, where would you judge God on faith? Where do you fault God? Now, put me aside, because it's not about me. Where will you fault God? If anything goes wrong in your life, where will you fault God? You know, people think that pastors are God. I'm not God. I'm just his caretaker. So, something goes wrong, where will you fault God? You, you think faulting a pastor is faulting God? You where will you fault God? You can't fault God. He's never wrong. If anything goes wrong, we're wrong. Did you hear me, sir? God is never wrong. If anything goes wrong, we are wrong. And you better accept that truth. God is never wrong. If anything goes wrong, then we are wrong. So this person will now go tomorrow and maybe borrow money. Just maximize your prophetic support. First Peter 5, 8 and 9, and then we close. Look at this. Defend your job spiritually. Together with me, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. What is your role now? Verse 9. Whom resist steadfast in the faith. Knowing one thing, that these same afflictions are accomplished in your brain the world. So you don't stand to defend your job. You go the world for us. God forbid. Let me conclude by saying tonight. God has the capacity to sustain you with or without a job. But if you are going to have his full support, be sold out to him. God has capacity to sustain you whether with or without a job but if you are going to enjoy God's full support be sold out to him all out be sold out to him be sold out to him rise your feet and let's celebrate God's word hallelujah are you celebrating God's word hallelujah now lift your hand to him and thank him for light for the word that came to you specially the word that came to you specially I know my sheep my sheep know me say they hear my voice they follow me you must have heard something so thank him for whatever you heard there must be peculiar light or, or revelation in your part thank you for whatever you heard 
In Jesus' name, we pray. In this service, we're going to be praying very quickly for all those that have been under satanic siege, that job-wise, there's no advancement. We're praying and saying in the name of Jesus Christ, every siege that has stagnated people in the area of jobs is broken now. Everyone will advance. Raise your voice. Pray in the name of Jesus now. In Jesus' name we pray. Is this prayer? Is this prayer? Every siege holding people from advancing in their jobs, let that siege be destroyed now. Raise your voice. Pray in the name of Jesus, somebody. Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. We are going to be praying a targeted prayer. All of these prayers are targeted. I don't have them written. He told me to come. I will tell you what to pray. And that's what he's doing. There are sons with heart who don't have resources. There are sons with their hearts. They will do anything for the kingdom of God. But they have no resources. Now we we'll pray and say, God, every son here is male and female. Every son in this commission with heart. You have said your hearts, you know them very well. That if they are blessed, the kingdom will advance. We decree open heaven. Now. And let there be manifestation before the end of this month. Raise your voice. Pray in the name of Jesus, somebody. Every son with a heart. A heart for the kingdom. A heart for advancement of the kingdom. A heart for evangelism. A heart for investing in the kingdom. Who is without the means? Let their heavens open now. Let them be divinely visited. Let them be divinely visited. Let them be divinely visited. Open doors for them. Open heaven over them. Every soul with a heart. Open doors over them. Open heavens over them. That immediately after this service, testimonies will flow. Testimonies will flow. Testimonies will flow. Jesus' name we have prayed. Last we'll be praying. Let there be eruption of job breakthroughs in this church. Let there be what? Eruption of job breakthroughs on every side. Breakthroughs here and there on every side. People will have to be in a place where they choose between ten jobs, three jobs. They go for the one they like the most. Lord, from today, let there be an eruption. Job breakthroughs in this commission. Raise your voice, pray in the name of Jesus' name. Remember not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. The word spring forth means eruption. Now it shall spring forth. Let there be an eruption of joy breakthroughs. Do a new thing, Lord. Let it spring forth from amongst us. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. God has surely heard us. Shall we give him thanks for hearing us? Lord, we thank you. We give you all the glory. Thank you for hearing us. In Jesus' precious name. Now take your offerings. And let's honor God with our offerings. Leave that offering to the Lord and thank him. And ask him to give you greater faith favors testimonies as we give this offering. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we thank you. It's a privilege to give to you. Please accept our offerings and let everyone return with greater favors testimonies. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Now, while that is going on, please turn your feet as we 
approach the communion table while you cast your offerings. It is communion for desired favors. Thank you, Jesus. I heard him. Someone will, before midnight today, receive a call, text message. It will be a testimony. Yeah. It will happen today. Yeah. Take all the glory, Jesus. Communion for desired favors. In 1 Corinthians 7 and 16, I've never used the scripture for communion before. The Holy Ghost just showed me today. 1 Corinthians 7 and 16, he said, The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? So the Holy Ghost said to me, he said, The communion, the cup of the blood, is the cup of blessings. So you take a shot of this blood, and boy, blessings come rushing. He said, the cup of blessings, not the communion of the blood of Jesus. So as you take a shot of this blood, blessings will come your way mightily. Now, you will lift your hands and say, Lord, I believe in your word. As I take this communion, this is the area I desire a miracle. Go ahead, pray in the name of just now. Those online, please follow instructions online. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the coming of the blood of Christ? That means as you partake of the blood, you are partaking of his blessings. As you partake of the blood of Jesus, you are partaking of the blessings of Jesus. Lord, as I partake of this communion tonight, I drink the cup of your blessings. Are you praying? Are you praying, somebody? In Jesus' name we have prayed. Father, we thank you for the mystery in the blood of Jesus. The mystery of the cup of his blessing. As we therefore partake of this communion, let everyone drink to greater blessings. You said, as we desire, so you, you will deliver. And therefore, whatever has been desired on this mountain through the vehicle of prayer, as we partake of this communion, let it be delivered to every one of us. Now take all the glory again, Father. In Jesus' precious name. Now, we shall grace in a moment, so just stay where you are. Don't miss Sunday. Sunday, I'm going to be talking on three powerful things. Speaking on three powerful areas. Now, for the people for marriage, first service, don't miss it. Don't miss it. Praise the Lord. People for marriage, don't miss it. First service. I'm going to be sharing some things that will help us. And then, if your marriage, you know, uh, first service is for those who want to are trusting God for marriage breakthroughs. The second service, if you notice your marriage, you are struggling a lot, make sure you log on to that service. Make sure you log on to that service. If the marriage, since you got married, it's been one struggle to the other, one struggle to the other, log on to that second service. And then the third service, if you observe that there are patterns in the family that keep reoccurring, they're not good things. Rising and falling, untimely death, poverty, people will rise to the peak, fall down to the dust. All evil patterns. Don't miss the third service. Praise the Lord. They're going to all be power packed, and I trust Jesus for every one of us who all have testimonies. This divine exemption season will touch every area. The depth of exposure God has given to, to us in this area, divine exemption, is deep. And so make sure you don't miss any of these services. The Lord will bless you as you come in Jesus' name. Let's share the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now forever. And may surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. We shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. God bless you.